in this lecture we are going to perform another analysis and that is about tensile testing previously we have understand the analysis of three point bending test that is used to check the bending of a part now we are going to learn how to perform the tensile test to check the tensile strength of a part so first let's understand the problem then we are going to solve this in ls prepost in this problem we have a specimen of this dimension highlighting here you can see this is the major dimension this vertical dimension and this is the horizontal that is you can say width and length so this is a standard test specimen in this kind of specimen we have a larger cross section here and here we have a smaller cross section and we are going to see the stresses onto this smaller cross section all the dimensions are highlighting here you can use them for the reference the thickness of this part is 3 mm and the unit system we are going to follow is mm newton second and tons for the mass so before going into the software first let's understand how this kind of testing is done in the real life here you can see this is a tensile testing machine in this tensile testing machine we have a tensile machine here you can see this is a tensile machine here we have a detailed view of this so here basically our specimen is placed here let's say i'm taking the simple dimension like this and it is fixed from the both side from the left from the downward and this upward and you can see there are multiple parts of this this cross head these are grips test specimen extensometer and load cell so what happens in physical testing is this part is kept fixed from the bottom and it is pulled from the top so this testing machine is going to pull this end of the part in the upward direction because of this pulling a stress will be generated inside the body we will calculate the strain value or the displacement and the strain using this load cell and strain gauges we also have the machine for calculating all this from this strain value we calculate a graph between stress and strain for this part so here you can see various processes in the specimen when we are going to apply a tensile load onto the specimen so here initially let's say we have a specimen here we are going to consider only this length here from this to this because this is the actual area of concern you can see this is our area of concern and we are going to pull it like this and this is fixed so after some time it is going to be stretched like this you can see this length has increased and when you further continue pulling this part you can see a necking will start going to take place it means the cross section area will start to decrease this process is called necking and eventually in the end the part is going to fail or this is the fracture from this we are going to plot a curve between strain and stress and there are multiple zone inside the stress strain curve so initially you can see this is my first point and this is the second point up to here okay let me change the color so up to here you can see it is a straight line so this straight line is basically called the elastic strain or elastic zone means if you remove the load the part is going to come back its original state or original position after that if you continue stretching the part there will be starting of nonlinearity so this end point after which the nonlinearity start is called the yield strength and after that you can see the curvature is going to be like this this maximum stress is called the uts that is ultimate tensile strength and this is end is the fracture point and after this uts tensile strength the necking is going to start and the part eventually is going to fail so this is called the plastic strain or plastic zone because after this zone if you remove the load 
the part is not going to come back its original position or the original size and from here you calculate the young modulus that is slope stress divided by strain so that is about the stress strain curve we are also going to plot in our result in the software also this stress strain curve let's go back to our actual problem so we have already discussed about this engineering stress and true stress so basically engineering stress does not consider the change in area of the specimen while true stress also consider the change in area here you can see a naught and a so a naught is initial area a is the final area so from this data we plot a curve between stress and strain so in this case we are going to take this true strain because it is going to plot the actual values and in the software you also get the true stress and true strain because software also consider the change in cross section so in our case we are going to take the second condition we have already discussed previously how to insert this kind of curve we take multiple points in the stress strain curve to insert this kind of curve in this analysis we are going to insert different type of material model that is using the e10 so here you will plot a curve between stress and strain and you can see this is the yielding point after that this is the uts point so this is the e10 that is the tangential modulus so in this case we are taking young modulus value poisson ratio density yield strength and e10 value these values are highlighting so e10 is basically slope so this is basically change in stress divided by change in the strain the boundary condition in our problem is we are going to fix this part from the one side as the as same in the physical testing here you can see it is fixed we are going to apply some displacement of let's say 10 mm in the other direction and we are going to check the stresses so we will check the stresses in the part we are also going to plot the curve between stress and strain just like we have seen here in our condition this stress strain curve so with this information we are going to solve this problem in the next lecture